Uh, welcome to mysimhelp.in. Uh, in this video, we will look about the SAP data migration cockpit, especially on the work center uh, migration. How do we do a migration of the work center? Uh, we have already released a couple of uh, the introduction videos. One is about the SAP DMC introduction and also about a direct transfer and about the object list. So these videos will help you to have a overlook about the uh, SAP data, uh, the fundamentals of the SAP DMC. So SAP DMC generally works only on the SAP Fiori uh, application. So you need to launch the Fiori Launchpad and go to the search part. And here you have the migrate your data. So you need to go and type for the app migrate your data and please select the latest one. Uh, don't select the old one or the depreciated one. Go for your migrate data. Once you select this, next thing is we need to create a project. So it is always good for us to create uh, one project per object and here you need to select the methodology like whether you are going to directly migrate from SAP system or you are going to migrate using staging tables. Uh, in this series we will look in how do we migrate using the staging tables. Once you click the create it will it, you can see here the migration approach it has mentioned as migrate data using staging tables. And uh, you need to give a name. So I have given the name ZWCT, etc. Uh, this mass transfer ID is a system generated ID, and the database connection is uh, SAP local S4 HANA database schema. So this is what uh, by default. Let's say if we go to create, we are getting this data. Now let me start using the creation. So it's asking for project name. So let me give a new project name. And then I selected this. So once you finish this, it automatically pops up the step two portion. So in the step two portion, we need to select the work center. So let's say we wanted to. So we have a lot of migration objects. So about the migration list of migration objects we have seen in the earlier one. So I'm trying to find my work center object. So it's in the product. Yeah, it's here. And there is a documentation portion also. If you click this, it will take to the documentation. Now, since there are multiple migration objects, you need to select it. So once after you give a selection indicator here, you need to push this. You can see here. So now you have got the selected migration objects. So we, we have selected this. Now the next one is to do a review. So the system gives a pop-up asking about the predecessor object. So do you want to add the predecessor, etc. So generally for a work center, cost center will be a predecessor. So I am mentioning here, no, I don't want to add anything. So I'm just selecting this do not add. Uh, now in the bottom, you can see there is a detail about create projects. So now we are clicking the create project. So once the system creates the project, you get a detail about it. You can see here there's a name, status, uh, all those things. So the project has got created. Now let's go and see what is inside the project. So about this screen, if you see here, you know, we can have multiple filters for us to do. Okay, I have filtered on my name, object, etc. And here you can see there is a migration object. In case if you want to do any edit, copy, etc. We can select this. This will help you to edit, copy, etc. Now I just wanted to go and see the project details. So I just go here. I can click here. Okay, or I can go inside. Now what system does this? We should understand this. So this is a migration object and it is talking about the data. So it is actually trying to, you know, there are going to be multiple uh, data sets inside this particular object. It's saying there are seven tables for which the data needs to be pushed in. And you have mapping task then there's simulation, then there's a migration, then there's a migration process. So these are just an indicator for us to help, you know, whether if you are having an error, if it is done, etc. And also this particular area is also important, which talks about whenever you start an action, it will say whether how many actions are running, etc. And again, this monitoring, mapping, so all are related to the same things, okay. Let's see the same basic things, then we will come to the next set of things. Now, uh, the next thing what I need to do is I need to download a template. 
if you see here the system goes in a sequence first you need to download a template then you need to upload a file then you need to prepare then the mapping task then simulate then migrate so this is how the status goes in now the first thing is we need to download the template so we are clicking the download template so how do you want to download xml file also so let us download your xml file only system has downloaded so now you can see basically uh, the uh, the status is now allowing to do upload file now the system has downloaded in my local file i will show you the dmc so we can see here this is the data migration template uh, so this is important for us to understand how the template uh, is uh, designed actually for every object there is going to be one template and this template will be downloaded from the system and any time uh, i mean it is always better that you download the latest template especially when you run a project for a longer period in case in case there are multiple releases so it is better that you see that you use the latest template okay uh, so let us look at the template so the template if you see this is an introduction okay so this is all about a general data irrespective of the the particular uh, object let's whether you work for a uh, work center or you work for a cost center or whether you work for a jl account this is how the template will look like you will have an introduction then you will have a field list so the field list generally gives you about what are all the sheets that are here let's see we have a work center header then we can talk about uh, there is a, a work center capacity so we have a work center capacity then we are having intervals of available capacity. So this is intervals of available capacity. So the next one is capacity shifts. So, never. so like this, here inside the field list, you have all the sheets. And this also talks about what are all the mandatory fields and what is the text type, length, etc. So this is something that next we have to understand here. And before, whenever we start filling the data, now you can see here, you have a work center. Uh, details okay so and again a lot of things are hidden here so in case if you want to understand it if you can make it a little big then you will be able to understand what this detail is all about so let me select this and then let and hide you you can see here so what is that in the box so these are all nothing but the internal tables staging tables so this is a lot of details like work center resource plant etc and very importantly as a basic thing uh, system will allow will not allow you to modify this in case of deletion or uh, you know uh, inserting any uh, row between these areas and all so whatever you want to do you are allowed to only enter the details use the template without disturbing the any uh, fields which is given here and then we will be able to use to upload the data so so this is how this template will be used to upload uh, so so we will try to fill in a data now and try to upload it so here we need to establish the relationship once the data is all prepared then we will be able to do the upload so uh, i will stop at this junction i will continue the uh, complete the data and i will uh, guide you the upload in the next video so we have seen the uh, part one of the work center uh, template etc uh, we will continue the uh, upload portion in the next video